Shalom. Call Laila Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. So that's a short video that I want to play. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go into the lesson. This is a um, fair use. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So this gone with the wind is talking about our spirit. Let's play the video. Don't panic in this life. You can actually, there's no sense of death. Everything goes to sleep and it wakes back up again. Refolds and unfolds, refolds and unfolds. And if you're, if you're, if you're wise, if you're careful, because you can remember conscious moments in your life, can't you? You can remember moments when you're like, wait a minute, I'm in a bigger space than just this little body right here. You become fully aware of everything around you. And if you quiet yourself, you can think about those things. Well, apparently I did that at the last passage because when I came into this life, I woke up, remember, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And the first thing I did was worked out the flower of life. When I was six years old, I started making these pieces. What Da Vinci tried to do at 80, I did at six years old because I had been working on it perhaps from a past life. But we know that energy does not die. Energy just reboots itself and reboots itself. So we are eternal. So stop panicking, thinking your life is over. You've done this trillions of times. You'll get good at it and we'll be perfect one time if we get conscious. Don't panic in this life. Kind, we know that our spirits are comprised of pure energy, pure energy and fire. And this is why when the spirit leaves the body, the body turns cold. And we also know that energy cannot be destroyed but by the Most High because He created energy. So energy is transferred or translated from one from one field to another or from one spectrum to another so I want to go here when you look at <clears throat> when you look at water you can freeze water and when you freeze that water then it's in a frozen or a dead state and then if it melts, it's moving and it's full of life and energy. And even when that water evap evaporates, it just transforms its shape or figure. So it's just a changing of the molecular structure so that water just becomes a mist or a steam. It doesn't go away. It just transform, transfers from one state to another or transform. <clears throat> Let's go here. <clears throat> well, this is one of my favorite topics, reincarnation. 
Let's read Ecclesiastes 1, verse 6. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. <clears throat> Let's go here real quick. Let's go to John 3 and 8. And how was I speaking? <clears throat> so our, our bodies are occupied by energy. And our spirits are like the wind. That is like a vapor that's here for one moment. And then as a vapor dissipates or disappears. Remember, just like steam, there's water in a frozen dead state. And then water is alive in a flowing state like rivers of living water. And then that water can become a mist or a steam that can evaporate like a vapor. So is our life. Here one moment and then in a twinkling of an eye dissipates or transforms from one state to another. <clears throat> Let's go to John 3, 6, no, John 3 and 8. <clears throat> the book of John, chapter 3. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. John 3 and 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So he's speaking to Nicodemus. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So our body is controlled by the breath of the Most High. He creates life, understanding. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes 1, verse 6. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. So the cycle of life and coming back in different lots. So the wind just goes through a cycle, what we call cyclical. Ecclesiastes 1 and 7. <laughs> All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. So our spirits is like the wind or like the rivers, rivers of living water that just simply recycles back into a certain lot during a specific time and place, just like the rivers flow. See, let's go here to Sirach 40. <clears throat> Sirach 40, verse 11. All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that which is of the waters doeth return into the sea. See that? So our bodies is made up of about 75% water and is occupied by pure energy, a certain molecular, molecular structure, no different from running or living water. It just simply changes its molecular structure or state when it dissipates into a steam or a mist. That's our spirit, but it doesn't go away. <clears throat> or if we die, that's a, a different state or structure that our bodies take. But nothing can contain the spirit 
where it's stuck in a certain frozen state forever. <clears throat> Let's read this again. Sirach 40 and 11. All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that which is of the waters shall return into the sea. So we come out of the seas. Okay, when you see a bunch of sperm swimming together, that's likened unto a sea. So we are of the waters, made of the waters. <clears throat> Let's go back to that. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So we come back and dwell amongst people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. When that time is right, when the time is right, when the season is right. Let's go to Job 7 and 7. Oh, remember that my life is a wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. See? So our life on the earth is like a small vapor. <coughs> Let's read that again. Remember, Yahweh Shai spoke about the spirit that listeth where it may in John 3 and 8. So even the elect, the Lord, has a special anointing spirit on those that he hath chosen. So everybody comes back in due season and in due time, according to the Lord's timeline. <clears throat> John, Salakia, Job 7 and 7. Oh, remember that my life is when mine eye shall no more see good. So we are here as a small, thin vapor of the breath of the Most High, the breath of life. Let's go to James 4 and verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get again. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. See? So this is why there's no reason to be lifted up in pride. The Bible says, Why is earth and ashes proud? Because our spirit turns into a mist or a sting, and it is called back up to the Most High and guided or carried by the angels. But our bodies become what they were created from, the minerals or the dust of the earth, the elements, and broken down and brought right back down to the basic elements by which we were created from. So this is why the Bible says, why is earth and ashes proud? Because the spirit is where the life is. That's the life force, the spirit is what quickeneth or make us alive, the breath of the Most High. Let's go back to that and <clears throat> get ready to close this out. John 3 and 8. <clears throat> Yahweh Shai speaking. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So the Lord controls 
the time that those spirits come on the earth and the time that they're called home. And he has a special care for his elect. So the elect is reserved to certain times of prophecy and are utilized to help bring forth the Lord's word and will. This is why the men of the Lord are called to prophesy. <coughs> Let's go to John, um, Ecclesiastes 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Ecclesiastes 6, verse 10. See? That which hath been is a name already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. So our spirits are controlled by the Most High. So when you read Ecclesiastes 1, the thing that has been is that which shall be, and that which shall be is that which I got to go ahead and get it because I'm getting ready to butcher it. So that thing is talking about the spirit which dwells within man, the essence from on high. Ecclesiastes 1. The book of Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So this thing is talking about the spirit of man, which is managed or controlled and created and sent out from the father of spirits. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. That which had been named that which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he, seeing there be many things that increase vanity. What is man the better? So let's get this next one. For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of this of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. So we read that in um, James 4, as a thin vapor or a shadow. So we are here like a small mist, M-I-S-T, a small mist, like a vapor or steam, a short moment <clears throat> compared to the time at the uh, or the age of the earth, approximately 13,000 years old. Let's read this again. For who knoweth what is good for man in this life, all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow? For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? So the Lord determines when that man is going to come back, who the prophets are, who's going to promote his word, who's going to warn the rest of the flock, who's going to be a rebel, who's going to be a villain or a spirit created for vengeance. The Lord determines all that. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Real quick, let's go back to James 4 and 14. So our lives are as a thin vapor that we have no control over, but the Father of Spirits do. James 4 and 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live 
and do this or that. So the Lord can call our spirit home at a moment's notice. Time to come home and our bodies is going to break down back into the elements or the minerals of the earth or from the dust that we came from. <coughs> now, where did I want to go and close out? Lost my train of thought. Let's see here. Yeah, back to Sirach. I won't close out here. Yeah. Sirach 40. <coughs> verse 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. So these are all judgments for those that are deviating or going against our creator. These things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. So all of these actors or characters are back in their lot in the last days. Remember the waters return back to the sea or come back on the earth in their lots. All of these things, let's go back to 10. These things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. So we're seeing pre-flood behavior again in these last days. All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again and that which is of the waters doeth return into the sea so these waters are populations peoples multitudes nations and tongues okay the man controls that that sea when you look at sperm underneath a microscope or a magnifying glass it's already a little population, if you will. But so that man implants the seed. I'll go ahead and end it there. So, oh, we got to read this one. Sirach 40, verse 17. Bountifulness is as a most fruitful garden and mercifulness endure forever. So there is no eternal hell or eternal death. This is a cut to the eternal hell or the eternal death doctrine, which is false. Let's read it again. That bountifulness is springing forth to life, offspring. Bountifulness is as a most fruitful garden, and mercifulness endure forever. See? So the Lord, mercy is eternal. Let's go ahead and end it there. So energy cannot be created nor destroyed by man. So the power or the control of our spirit, our life source or life force is of the most high, the breath of life and the eternal soul. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. And the Ba'ad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.